So this is Captain Sweep, and I'm here with Ka Cameron McSorley, and I'm, I'm just going to finish up this, this round of videos because he's given us so much knowledge in terms of what we can do to structure our estate in such a manner that we can protect ourselves, right? And if everyone starts to have a will and testament, perhaps on our website, we can start to delineate exactly what knowledge we have to put in which order for us to become true sovereign beings. So what I'd like to offer is that at the same time, synchronistically, what's happening through the Planetary Guardian New Paradigm Toolkit is there's a new software prototype coming out called ChatStream, which has the beginning of a shared knowledge community. And what it does is it allows an individual or maybe a team or group who has an idea or a vision to bring together 12 facilitators. And those 12 facilitators can invite 12 people on a team. So you're dealing with two layers of hierarchy, you're dealing with 144 people at once, and that you can program the chat room into seven missions. And in each mission, there's one objective. There's also a value, a conversation type, and a lens. So you can choose the framing. Like if you picked, um, let's say, accuracy and assessment is the convo type, accuracy is the value, and jurisdiction is the lens. Now you're getting real specific with your languaging. And now you can have your objective and it may be, you know, um, write out your testament and will. Maybe it's just that. And, and you have, that's, everyone has to do it. So everyone is typing their testament and will in this chat room at the same time and adding pieces. Wow. And, and so you can have all 12 facilitators doing the same mission, or you could have different missions at once. But let's say you get all the 12 facilitators, you have a meeting, you take them through that process. You show them, this is how you do it. So you do it with them, and then they do the same thing with 12 people. So you're creating this, this knowledge sharing, passing it down to a sort of like from a council to a council. Right. <clears throat> I like that. So that's, that's an offer on the table in terms of something which we have right now something which we're looking for test groups. We have one in Le Ciel where we have people from 30 countries going through a process, a one-year training program by the Le Ciel Foundation, which is uh, the first tester of this product, which is just starting yesterday or today. Cool. And so that's a big moment. And Nova is uh, my cohort in that. He's a, he's a programmer. I've been designing it and he's been programming it. And so that, that's, that we're working as a team to create this. And so we'd be honored to put this forward to you and to, to look to how to custom design it or how to utilize this format to start to bring a teaching system into mm -hmm. it. Because I think for Planetary Guardians, it's basically a big, it's a media game, but it's also a training system yeah. to, to teach people how to really, it seems, interact with language and interact with information sharing and knowledge sharing. So... Yeah, no, that's like you said, being able to formalize your your will and testament, what what it what it can turn into is a very clear definition of yourself. So how do you interact with people if you don't have boundaries? How do you interact with people if you don't know your own limits and you cross them all the time and then you're like, why is my life in chaos? Right. So wow, that's that's fascinating. That's fascinating. So the training system then could identify the individual, help them identify themselves and their own process in it through a lens on a specific topic, they might find then that that's the wrong 12 for them. And maybe they would move across and say, this is a better fit. This is more my forte. So they could maybe rearrange and find that. And then they could use it to create something very, very specific, delineated through each process from a council to a council across 144. Um, to have those people um, in themselves knowing where they fit and doing that inner work so that they're 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 not doing it for a process in themselves they're doing it for the people under them right that's just i i i can't think of a better thing to do with my time <laughs> and, and 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 it's so beneficial because what is the outcome of that at the end it's a social understanding it's a business that has a better function it's the revamping of something that needs to be overhauled that now has a better methodology behind it um, it's 
I love the idea of council work. Um, committees and councils make a ton of sense to me. Like why aren't, why aren't decisions made by youth groups and elder groups and peer groups in the community? If it's a big deal, lots of them will show up. If it's not, maybe just a few, but then that's used to steer public policy. So whether it's a public policy or a private policy in a business, whether that system's being used to help um, navigate a family crisis that maybe is broad spectrum, uh, we're looking at anything, it could be health issues, could be uh, systems of governance, uh, corporate structures, anything, right? That system could be used, uh, oh, in so many ways, in so many ways, because it's a communication platform, right? Yeah. And that's where it all comes from. So, I mean, I, I, that's great. I'd love to participate in something like that. Um, and then what are those lenses? You know, what are those topic heads? Uh, and, and what is the nature of how all of that plays together? Um, well, and like already, like what I see is with the languaging that I'm capturing that you're using, that they're basically choice lenses that we just need to have the word and the definition. And that to me, we'll build a like a law card set hmm. that is part of the inflow matrix because it's already got all these different um, lenses. But then like there's a health set, there's a law set, there's a governance set, there's a science set, there's an economic set that then you, re again, we're restructuring the mind. We're, we're creating a mind for the collective mind. Mm -hmm. And AI, I think one of the things that, that is missing from the idea about AI is that we're a very, they, they always talk about the machine AI, but they don't talk about the human AI. And, and just that the, the info tech connects the humans which have the consciousness. And that consciousness is what is going to flow between us through the info tech. Yeah. And that humans are very much a part of AI. And I think if we look at it that way and look to have the humans wanting to build a loving, peaceful AI where <laughs> it's good for us and we're using the best parts of it, we're not using it to destroy and kill and maim, that AI could could be actually an invention that works quite, I don't know, an invention, but uh, I mean, it, it, it to me is a, is a new an interaction. Emergence. Yeah, it's a new interacting of human consciousness. I mean, it's it's more than just a technology. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the thing. I think I mentioned that in the previous one, that Eucadia is an AI system. And what it is, is it is a network between conscious beings. And AI is where I believe a whole lot of little pieces work together to give rise to a consciousness. And uh, yeah, it's in that network where we're going to see it for sure. Absolutely. And, and having it run on algorithms, just like our autonomic nervous system. Mm keeping itself in check, giving suggestions. Um, I mean, even basic AI systems are getting pretty good right now, but they're either spot on the money or they're way off. Mm. But, but that's where people come in. Like you said, we are an important part of that. And the computer doesn't have the creativity that we have. It doesn't have a spirit. Like, I don't know where brilliant ideas come from sometimes. I'm like, was that out there somewhere? Mm. Did I think of that? Because yeah. sometimes an idea can come to you like a muse, right? So... Yeah, I think, oh man, I, I love what you're getting at. I can see it. It's, it's that network of people and that kind of homogeneous way. And then utilizing that communication system to, to discover the emergence of what it is. We create a network, right? We create a pot, we put some dirt in it, we put a plant on it. Now you want to know how that root ball is going to grow? Look in there. It's emergent, right? So we've created a pot, it's the network, we put some dirt in it, we put some seeds in there, there's the people, let's see what it grows. And what the growth of that network is can then be used to define, well, what system, you know, what is this AI gonna look like? How is the communication functioning? Um, say there's a problem somewhere and you need an extra communication channel. You don't really know until you get there. We start off with a good idea and then we have to adapt it a little bit as it happens. Um, those systems are emergent in nature and in communication. So it's, uh, it's a matter of doing that, finding it, refining it, defining it, and then uh, giving it back to the world to continue to adapt. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so maybe next, next step, I guess, is uh, uh, the beginning to, I might have to take, I guess, probably do it myself, we'll get 12 people who wanna create their own kind of shared knowledge communities in a sense take you through the process and then we learn how to use it. And then we tear down towards, I, I don't know, like this is just sort of a, 
um, next stepping after each, because I think I have an idea of where it's going and then the piece gets built and then you're kind of like, well, it isn't quite what I thought or what we thought. It's this piece now. And then you got to work with the actual piece of what it is. Exactly. And the next steps become emergent. Yeah. Yeah. So I like each step. Sometimes I really want to think it through about what we should do. And then I realize it, it never even works that way. And so it's like waiting. It's waiting for the chance where you go, OK, well, now we can do this. And then this happens where we have our, our little chat here and all of a sudden there's a convergence point of going, oh, okay, well, that's, that's obvious like that, you know, in order for us to get there, then we got to do this. So let's, let's, let's do it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's a natural flow, right? We can come up with a great plan in our mind and lay it all the way out to fruition of what our belief is. But as it goes and we get input from other people, we find out that it's not necessarily what we thought. And what we get isn't necessarily what we wanted, yeah. but it's what we were aiming at. It's what we needed. And we, we have to grow through those changes. And sometimes it's about letting go. That's what I keep realizing. Like all of this isn't for me. I'm just creator. And then it's for everyone else. So how much control do I have over that at that point? Yeah. All I can do is sit back and say, here were the tenants of its creation. Here's my purpose. Here's my will. Well, and, and I recognize in my own journey, my sort of movement, like I've been very reclusive and very sort of trying to get my stuff together mm -hmm. and getting it to the point where, okay, it can go into the world. And before that, I've been taking in a lot of info around people for like a long time. And it's very different when you shut everybody out and then just do your work. Oh, yes. It's very different. And so this is the beginning of sort of, you know, and, and a lot of my stuff is more, well, how do you connect all these other people? So it's, it's inherently that I'm sort of doing both. Hmm. But when you jump back out into the world, let's say start interacting with somebody else, then there's that, you know, whether the synergy or the feedback or the, okay, well, that's, you, you know, you, you're, you have this strong direction and stream. And for the most part, I'm acting like a, a passive receiver for a lot of the people that I know in terms of to intake their creative expression and then to hopefully assist in whether getting it somewhere else or capturing it, let's say in, in, in such a way we're doing it here. Um, mm, it's such, it's such the process. I find when I go and recluse into myself, it's to adapt to what I've found. Uh, and then I go back out into the world and I feel, and I, and I learn these new things, right? Like you're saying, and then I have to bring that back in and I have to adapt mm. to it. And because I can't control what other people do, I can only control myself. And if I am Raquel such recalcitrant to change then i can't adapt and so i have to right but what i find when i'm in myself never works in the rest of the world other people have their own ideas and ways so <laughs> it's about the yeah it's about the emergence of that process as we go forward and that's growth who knows where that next root is going to grow you think it's going in a straight line there's a rock there <laughs> well, and, and I, I might just challenge what you said in terms of I think what you have come up with can be used by other people. Oh, yeah. And and it's different, I think, again, when we start to get some numbers and start to, to build up a larger network of people who all have something substantial to offer and are all in the same position of us of going, most people say no because it's too big. But if we put it all together and show yes. we're, we're not just offering a little piece, we're offering the, the whole meal and it's strong it's 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 at another level so to speak and we can actually prove it so i think when there, again if i think even just 20 of us when there's 20 of us oh absolutely or even 12 maybe even five i mean i've often thought of five of us sort of banding together and sort of well uh, a uh, a 12 is a petite grand juror uh, and uh, a grand jury uh, and um that's why they needed 12 to sign the Declaration of Independence in the United States. It has a legal basis, right? Didn't Jesus have 12 apostles? Yeah, so to, have, so to have 12 on your team, it's good, right? Like it's, you get a full, then I think it's like basketball. It's like you have a team of 12, but the game is actually played with five. Right. Because you, yeah. you can't play with, like 12 is too many to play with. I mean, it's- Oh, like, it's huge. Yeah. Huge. With five, you can get a team going. And that gives everybody a break. And then you get to come back in and it's not the same thing that you were doing before. The game has changed slightly, still the same rules, but it's changed slightly. Your teammates were out there. They did some stuff. The other team members are in there now. It's a different group. It's a different environment. It requires adaptation. 
And so you go back to your bench and you go inside yourself and you adapt and you figure it out and then you go back out into it all. And it's, yeah, absolutely. You're not, you can't have too many players on the field. It's chaos. <laughs> not 144 people, 12. And then they can all do their thing independently at their own times. And that right. way we all get a break because we can't go constantly. Very true. I, I find lately I need a lot of time to meditate and just deal with the situation because it just seems like, you know, the, the door, I had this, uh, I don't finish sentences. The door is about to open. I was at, uh, what's that uh, festival, the big one? Um, Jambalaya? Jambala, yeah. And I, I, I had this quest cavern and I had this, all my maps up and I, I had basically, I think about 20, 20 quests written down on paper and they just opened the door and these and this and it's the first time i've experienced like a mob of people like most of the time i'm ignored my stuff is never like i i don't get the mob i don't get the people <laughs> people are like what is this it's so big it's it's it, so i'm at this quest cavern and then like every two or three minutes eight or ten groups of of the wild people would come and go what's this what's this everyone's just checking shit out because the door just opened it's it's one of the best places in there Cool. And and I'm just like, okay, pick a quest, pick a quest, pick a quest, pick a quest. And then, you know, you explain in two seconds and another group, pick a test. You know, and it was the first time of encountering, again, the public, where most of my time has been R&D and, and just testing little groups, testing little bits and pieces. And so That's, uh... to, to me, that movement into the real, like there's been a, a fear or block in me of not really wanting to move into the real world. Because I know like once you open the doors, you could have hundreds of thousands, you could, you could have millions, you, could, you have no idea about the, the amount of people. And if you're holding gold and you know it, you know, at some point, there's going to be a lot of people wanting to, to mine for the gold. Yeah. And, and so I just wonder about that, like, just as, as, a, as a finish, as an end of going, how are we going to deal with what's about to occur? Because I sense, I sense this melding of what we have is, is very strong magic. I would say so. Um, when you did the quests, do you give people the option of taking a quest or of writing their own? Ah, I say. <laughs> right? Because I know that if somebody says, well, I don't know who I am, what am I doing? Sure, I'll pick a quest. That's a journey of discovery for them. But if somebody comes in and says, these quests are fascinating, but I've been on that one and I know this one and that one I don't want to do again. Can I write my own? I have a purpose. And you go, oh, we got ourselves a higher order life form here. I see. I see. Because those are different levels of self-autonomy. Okay. A lot of people say, who am I? Send me on a quest so I might discover. I would come to you and say, I have a quest. 